Hey you guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to give you guys a look into how I do my pumping sessions. This is actually going to be one pumping session. I know this was highly recommended for me to do a, I think it was a day of pumping and that's just too much. So this is one session and I hope this fulfill your needs because I pump roughly 24, 24 ounces. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you're really interested in it, go ahead and stay tuned and don't forget to rate, subscribe and comment and I'll see you guys in the next video. So like I mentioned before, I think if I was to do a whole day worth of pumping sessions, that would take way too long to record. And not only that, the video would probably be roughly an hour or two. And who honestly is going to sit around and watch that? So this one session, I think it's going to be exactly what you guys need. I'm going to talk about what I do and how I do it and how I pretty much became an oversupplier because honestly, a lot of you guys want to know what exactly, what exactly I do. And honestly, I think a lot of that has to do with my regimen in the beginning, how how my routines went in the beginning and how dedicated I was to it. This is something that if you're going to do, you need to be truly, truly, truly 110% committed to it. You're gonna have sleepless nights. You're not gonna be able to rest. You're gonna be stuck to a pump a lot in the beginning. And it's extremely important that you already have this mindset. I already have this imprinted in your mindset because let me tell you something. You think you know, but you have no clue until you are in this journey, okay? So, in the beginning, I was pumping, sorry, in the beginning, I was pumping every three hours. So, I will pump at three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, 12 o'clock. And this was around the clock, okay? Like, if you, if you weren't pumping, you wasn't doing anything useful. To be honest with you, it is a lot, but. I try to basically keep my breasts empty. That is the key to all of this. Your body will create milk as long as you keep your breasts empty. A lot of times lactation nurses would be like, make sure you keep that baby attached to your boob properly. And that's true too, but the key to all of this, regardless whether a baby is attached to you or a machine is attached to you, the breasts empty, okay? If you keep your breasts empty, the milk will come. Your body will say, hey, looks like she's empty again. Let me fill her back up. So that is really, really important when you think about this stuff, okay? Make sure if you're going to be an exclusive pumper, make sure you come into the game well prepared. Get you a medical grade pump. I do have another video coming next week that is already recorded for you guys where I talk about the essentials and medical grade pump is the number one thing on that list. All pumps are not created equal. I don't know how else to explain this to y'all. If you want a pump that is going to suck you like a baby, get you a medical grade pump. If you want a pump that is going to keep your breast drain empty and keep your supply up, get you a medical grade pump. Now, medical grade pumps are expensive, but you can rent these pumps out. You can also go through your insurance company and you can also purchase them. So just be mindful of that. I'm gonna go into more details in later videos, but I do want to put that out there for you guys. So let's just go ahead and get back into this video. Currently, I am still pumping. I am getting close to my switch over mark, which is basically where I switch bottles. But what I'm gonna do here now is I am going to start to massage my breasts and I'm going to help my body empty out those ducts. I have elastic nipples and because I have elastic nipples, it is so important for me to start massaging as soon as possible within the first 20 minutes. Usually my breasts are pretty much useless after 20 minutes, between 20 to 25 minutes. Sometimes I push for 30, but it is important for me to start massaging them to help release the milk quickly. When you have elastic nipples, if you're not familiar with it, elastic nipples is basically when your nipples double in size when you pump or feed. Usually, usually this hinders me from um, producing enough milk. Sometimes it can, can end up killing my milk supply because I have a, a lot of issues with clogged ducts. Um, and yeah, it's just something that is bothersome, but if you know a little bit of tips and tricks to work with it, you'll be just fine with it. There are companies that provide, um, special flanges for elastic nipples, but I didn't find them useful. In fact, I found that they end up, end up hindering me even more when producing milk. So I just stick with my 
regular flanges that came with my pump. Um, I also brought additional ones because I, I like them. They, they work for me. But what I tend to do is I just use my hands to lock around the nipple area. And I pretty much just push on those ducts to help release them. And you're going to see me do this quite a lot throughout the video because it's going to really help with removing the milk and filling up those bottles. So now I've finally reached the switchover phase for one of my breasts, which is my left. This is my super boob. It produces the most milk. Um, but what I do is I just detach myself and I'll be very careful with this because although that bottle is filled up, I still have milk trying to come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that little bottle. I am going to tilt it over just to release some of that milk before I try to hook this little bottle onto my breast. And then I'm just here, I'm just showing you guys how much milk I produce. So this is about 10 ounces of milk. Usually if I fill it all the way up to the top and I don't lose milk by um, over squirting out, I guess you can say, it's about 12 ounces. So then I just attach myself there and I start the process over again where I am literally massaging my breast. And as you can see, the bottle is filling up quite quickly. Um, I don't think I filled this one up completely this particular time. I think I do get about like two or three additional ounces of milk out of that breast. And then I start focusing back on my right breast because my right breast also has to um, be released soon. So I just try to keep an eye on that. There are times where I don't keep an eye on my milk and trust me, it gets bad because the milk gets everywhere. And if you are not familiar with breast milk, it can be a little sticky because breast milk um, is a little sweet. So it can be sticky. It can be, um, and, then, and when it does uh, get somewhere and it dries up, it gets all crusty. It's just a, a mess, a complete mess. So basically I continue to do this process over and over and over again or as needed. But like I said, um, usually my breasts are pretty much useless after 20 to 25 minutes. I do tend to stay on the pump for like 30 minutes to probably 45 minutes. I have stayed on there even longer for 55, 59 minutes. But um, yeah, usually I try to keep around the 20 to 30 minute mark because it's pretty much useless after that. hit the 30 minute mark at this point I am ready to get off the pump you guys so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to make sure that there is not a lot of milk coming out if I am not expressing a whole bunch of milk what I'm going to do is just carefully remove the the cups and get off of the pump um, but before I do that I do like to squeeze it out just in case there is some coming out because sometimes what happens is if I'm gonna pump too long which it ha this happened happen for a while but if I am gonna pump too long my body will start another letdown. And when another letdown occurs, then you know, you just gotta stay on the pump and get that milk out. But other than that, usually this, ha this hasn't happened in a while. So I'm going to just carefully remove the bottles and then I'm going to input my data into my app. This app is actually compatible with my uh, Sonata, which is the, the type of pump I use. There are apps out there, if you don't have the Sonata, there are apps out there where you can enter in your data just to you know, keep up to date with how much milk you're expressing, which I highly recommend you doing. Um, but for me, it's just something that I tend to do just to get an overview of how much milk I was producing, especially in the beginning. Um, these days, it's not really that big of a deal because obviously I know I have a good bit of milk that comes out, so I'm not really worried about it. So moving on, this is how much milk I produce. As you can see, I have an ombre effect going on with my milk. This is quite common, especially if I'm waking up first thing in the morning. There is, there is gonna be a little bit of blue milk in my milk, which is totally fine. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to just put a cap on there and I'm gonna give it a little swirl to mix it all up. As you can see, the milk in the little bottles is pretty much darker, uh, but all of this milk is gonna get mixed up. Now let's say for instance, if I had like a bunch of blue milk, I'm just gonna dump it. Most, time, most of the time, 
have tons of milk sitting in the refrigerator. Um, Bailey really doesn't drink anything over a day old. So today's milk, she'll get it the next day. Um, otherwise, I just dump it out. I don't like to leave milk in past 24 hours. It's just not my thing. Um, but you know, people do what you do. You know, people say you can leave it up to three days. That's up to you. But my preference is just to keep it for 24 hours. Um, she, she consumes it within 24 hours. Let me just say that. So yeah, like I said, I'm just going to swirl it up. If it was too blue, I would dump it. Um, as you can see, the milk looks totally fine after you swirl it. And so now I am just going to measure it out so I can see how much I pumped. And basically I just take each bottle. So I take the two from the left and two from the right and I'll just dump each in, into each bottle just to get the correct measurements. So as you can see on the left side, we did 12.25. On the right, we did 11.5. So 11 and a half and, and a 12 and a quarter, not bad. Not bad at all. That is, that's great to me. That's, that's, that's some legit stuff right there. So that's enough for, if you ask some moms, that's enough for about four feedings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and dump that into my, um, additional bottles, which these are my dumping bottles. Basically I have bottles that I pump in and then I have bottles that I dump milk in and the bottles that I use currently I'm using is Tommy Tippy, which I'll use these with my first kid and my second, but my first kid with breast milk and I love them. Um, I was using Nano Baby, but I had a lot of issues with their bottles. So I just went back to something I'm used to and I just know that I can trust. Um, and so basically what I'm doing here is just filling up the bottles. I think I filled them up, I want to say to about six ounces. Normally Bailey drinks about six ounces per feeding. Sometimes she drinks a little bit less. Never really more. If it's too much, she'll throw it up. So. I keep it around that six ounce mark because that's good for her belly. But anyway, you guys, that is pretty much it. I'm going to measure out this bottle. And then after that, um, yeah, we're just going to wrap it up. And I will see you guys in the next video. Do not forget to rate, subscribe, and comment. And don't forget to hit the bell so that you know when I post another video. You definitely don't want to miss the next video. The next video is all about essentials for exclusively pumping moms. So if you're somebody who wants to get into this pumping game and this pumping lifestyle, definitely stay tuned for the next video. Thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see y'all later. Bye. Baby, the sun